imagine a 22-year-old boy been to the best school and college in India, the most snobbish, expensive, elitist college in India. And these schools and colleges in India make you insufferable, conceited, non-communicative, and you think you can change the world. And then, Indian families, as you know, have their future laid out for you. You can't do a thing. They've got it all laid out for you, and you have to follow your parents. But out of curiosity, and I was also the Indian national squash champion, so the world was at my feet. Then out of curiosity, I went to a village in India where there was famine, starvation, death, hunger. And it changed my life. Went back home, told my mother, I'd like to live and work in a village. Mother went into a coma. She said, what is this? Whole world is laid out for you. Everything is on your feet. You can choose the jobs that you want. And all of a sudden, you want to go to a village? There's no money, there's no job, no prospect, no security. What are you going to do? I said, I want to be an unskilled laborer digging wells. She didn't speak to me for many years because she thought I'd let my family down. But then, for five years, I was an unskilled laborer digging wells, and I came across the most extraordinary knowledge and skills that very poor people have, that you don't read about it in books or universities. You actually see them with that knowledge, skill, wisdom, which you don't ever see. And I thought that why are we wasting this knowledge and skill why can't we use them, apply them, show them respect, and have a college only for the poor? I don't have the... So, I started a college, went to this village in Thelonia. They looked at me and said, are you running from the police? I said, no. Didn't get a government job? They said, no. Oh, you failed in your exam? I said, no. What are you doing here? What are you doing in this village? Something wrong with you? I mean, you've got the best jobs, you've got the best education, and all of a sudden you want to come to this village in the middle of nowhere? I said, I want to start a college only for the poor. So then they said, gave me some very good advice. They said, please, don't bring anyone with a degree and qualification into your college. So it's the only college in India, indeed the world, but should you have a master's or a PhD, you're disqualified to come. You have to be a cop-out or a drop-out or a wash-out to come. Someone who works with his hands, someone who has the dignity of labor, someone who is willing to work with the community as an equal. So we started the Barefoot College, and we redefined professionalism. Who's a professional today? A professional is someone who has an combination of competence, confidence, and belief. A water diviner is a professional. A traditional midwife is a professional. A traditional bone setter is a professional. These are all people accepted, respected by communities, and only incidentally, they don't know how to read and write. Where is it written that just because you can't read and write, you can't become a doctor, or you can't become an engineer, you can't become a dentist, you can't become an architect, you can't become a designer. Where is it written? So we went about to prove this, and we called it the Barefoot College. It's the only college in India which believes in Mahatma Gandhi's work style and lifestyle. We live on the floor, we eat on the floor, we work on the floor. There are no contracts. Anyone who comes to work with me for 20 years need not get more than $150 a month. You don't come for the money, you come for the challenge and the work and serving the community. It's the only college in India where the learner is the teacher and the teacher is the learner. It's the only college which don't give degrees and qualifications because the certification should be done by the community you serve, not by the college or university you go to. So it's a completely different concept we try to introduce. It's 500 miles 
southwest of Delhi. It's a very small village, 45 degrees centigrade in the winter. Sometimes it does not rain for five years. So it's a very hard life and you live within your means. So when we said we wanted to do this, they said, well, prove it. So we built the Barefoot College. This is the first Barefoot Architect. He can't read and write, but he built my college for me at $1.50 a square foot. When we came to the, up to the roof, I went to the forester with a very fancy degree. I said, can you tell me what plants to put in, what saplings? He said, I don't know, no water, very hard rock, no chance. So then I went to the old man in the village and said, what do you think I should put in? Oh, he gave me an advice and this is what it looks like today. Went to the roof. Women said, now clear out, because this is a technology you don't want to share with the men. They were waterproofing the roof with me with a combination of jaggery, cow's urine, and God knows what else, but it hasn't leaked so far. It's the only college in the world which is fully solar energized. But the first, but it has been energized by a Hindu priest who's never done more than five years of schooling. 40 kilowatts of panels on the roof. Everything works off the sun. For the next 25 years, I have no problem with power. 70 lights, 70 fans, 700 lights, 700 fans, 40 computers, telephone exchange, electronic mail, all works off the sun. What's the best way of communicating today? Telegraph? No. Telephone? No. Television? No. Tell a woman. So we have started solar electrifying, only training women as engineers. And we started this in India. And after we found that we could take any illiterate woman from any part of India from a village who's never been to school and college and put her onto a, onto, a, onto a table like that and in six months, she could be a solar engineer. We also have a dentist. These are grandmothers who are illiterate, who are looking after the teeth of 7,000 children. In another six months, maybe, maybe, they'll be able to perform a root canal. So we are solar electrifying villages all over India and where we are bringing in light, we're also generating income. Livelihoods have increased. And only by the solar lanterns that the barefoot engineers are producing, you have sales of handicrafts over $100,000. We went to a we have solar electrifying villages in Ladakh. And we went to this woman in that village and said, what has been the benefit of solar energy to you? And she thought for a minute and said, it's the first time I can see my husband's face in winter. Solar cooked food. If you come to the Barefoot College, you only get solar cooked food. And they're all fabricated by illiterate women. They do the welding. They do the, they do the measuring. They also make the clock that makes the solar cooker a clam, uh, according to the sun. It sort of moves. They're almost half German unfortunately, because they're so precise. Indian women are not very precise. Wherever there's a high percentage of illiteracy, we use puppetry. Puppets, this man is 300 years old. He's my psychoanalyst, he's my doctor, he's my teacher, he's my lawyer, he's my donor. He raises money for me, solves all my disputes. And whenever we have problems in the village, someone's not working with each other, there's some tension, this man is called Joachim Chacha, he's 300 years old, he knows the gossip of all that's ha happening in the village, and it solves all my problems. These puppets are made out of recycled World Bank reports. Went to Afghanistan. With this technology, this demystified, decentralized technology that we have, we went to Afghanistan. Went to this village in Afghanistan, and as I said, I'd like to take a woman to India to bring this train as a solar engineer. Ah, not possible. This woman can't even go out of her house and you want to take her to India. I said, all right, I'll make a concession. I'll take the husband along as well. So the husband came along and these are the three first women ever of Afghanistan. This is my best solar engineer, 55-year-old grandmother. 
She has solar electrified 200 houses for me in Afghanistan, in, in uh, Uruzgan, still working today. I asked her to talk to some engineers in Afghanistan, and she actually told the head of a department of an engineering department, saying, taught him how there is a difference between AC and DC, this grandmother telling the head of the department. They went and solar electrified the first five villages ever in Afghanistan. We made a film on it and showed it to the UN. And we said, you know how much it costs to take seven men, seven women and uh, three men to India, fly them into India, train them for six months, buy 150 units, solar electrify five villages whole. Do you know how much it cost us? We said, no. The cost of one UN consultant sitting for one year in Kabul. And they said they were horrified. They said they can't believe it. They can't show it in the film. I said, isn't it true? You have 700 consultants sitting in trouble, taking $150,000 a year, and not one village has been solar electrified. Those three women have trained 27 more women in Afghanistan. So the barefoot approach is to train a trainer, and they train other women also. Went to Africa, 2004, 2009. This is, what this, this is the light they use, called by different names. Three to five dollars a month. So what is the barefoot approach? You call the whole community together. They all take decisions on behalf of the whole community. They have a community contribution. Each house has a right, gets three lights and one mobile charger. And they form a committee to come to collect the money. So a sustainable community owns it and you don't depend on anybody from outside. So these women come for the first time ever leaving the village sitting on a plane and come to India for six months. Some training, that's a very short clip. Three parts of solar system. One is photovoltaic solar module. Solar <laughs> Remember the illiterate. Half an hour complete. They go back as solar engineers and solar electrify their own village. So far, we've trained 300 grandmothers from 29 countries all over Africa. The whole continent has been covered. And please remember, these 300 grandmothers are the only solar engineers of Africa. Only. Because we believe that men are untrainable. Men are restless, men are ambitious, men are compulsively mobile, and they all want a certificate. And the moment you give a man a certificate in Africa or any de least developed country, they leave the village within days looking for a job. So there's no point training a man in this sort of technology. But the miracle has happened where these women have actually gone back home and trained men as engineers. So that is a great mindset fundamental change. I went to, sorry, I went to um, Sierra Leone. There was this minister, minister for education driving down in the middle of night to, uh, to um, Freetown. See, it's this village, all solar electrified. What happened? So he comes back, goes into the village, says, how did this happen? 
So this minister shown these two grandmothers. These two grandmothers, uh, grandmothers, he's totally mystified. He said, where did they go? Went to India and back. Strange guy, Bunker Roy, came, took us over, came back. Went straight to the president. President said, he said, do you know there's a solar electric village in your country? He said, no, I didn't know. So the next day, half the cabinet went to see these grandmothers. What has happened? What's the story? He summons me and says, can you train me some grandmothers? I said, Mr. President, I can't. But if you allow these engineers to train them, they will be able to solar electrify and train all the grandmothers you want in your country. So he built me the first barefoot training center in Africa. Move to the Pacific. We're going to cover the whole Pacific Islands in two years. There are 20 grandmothers coming from six islands in the Pacific. So this little small village in Thelonia has actually gone global. 20 women are coming in September from. And I have a marvelous arrangement with the government of India that should I select a grandmother from any part of the world, the government of India gives the airfare and six months training course. Now, have you seen a more progressive government like that? Never. So, all these women are now coming, the first barefoot women solar engineers of Nauru, Kiribati, Samoa, Fiji, worldwide. I went to see the Dalai Lama. And I said, the Dalai Lama, you know, you, we can train some Tibetan women as engineers. Ah, he didn't believe. He said, not possible, I have him on tape. Not possible, not a chance. And when I met uh, these two women, went to see him, they were looking down because you can't see the Dalai Lama in the face because he's a god. So he, they, I said, no, he looked at them and said, not possible, no way. Six months later, I said, Holiness, would you like to come and see these women? Oh, he was delighted like a child. And this woman, unbelievable to everyone, went to, close to the Dalai Lama and said, you know, this is a charge controller. You know, this is an inverter. You know, this is how it works. And the Dalai Lama looked at me and said, what have you done? I want to come and see Thelonia. So he came. Came to Thelonia, saw it, made a puppet on him. <laughs> and he said something very profound. He said, now that you have shown the Barefoot College working in practice, Let's see if the professors and experts can make it work in theory. Not possible. Thank you very much. <laughs> 